Record locking prevents two people from editing the same record at the same time in a multi-user scenario. Just imagine if they could edit the same record at the same time. The last person to commit the record would erase the first person's edit. That wouldn't be any good. We want to make sure that everybody's information gets in there and the only way to do that is to only let one person edit at the same time and once they release that record then you can go ahead and let the next person get in there and do it. Now this is fine in a manual scenario, you know, where you're just clicking into a field and starting to edit it. FileMaker will take care of all that. But when we're talking about scripting, you have to watch out about trying to write information to a record that is locked by somebody else. You don't want to run the rest of your script steps if you can't write to that record. That may be a crucial downfall of your script if it doesn't write to that record but does everything else. In order to demonstrate record locking, the best method is to simulate a multi-user scenario from your single machine, your local developer machine. You don't want to have to copy the file up to a server machine, check record locking, copy it back down, make the changes, copy it back up, work on testing again and see what might be causing problems. That's a lot of work. It's easier if you can simulate record locking on your single machine. And so we're going to do that. We're going to show you how to do that. What you want to do is go to the file menu, choose sharing, and share with FileMaker clients. Now this is how you'd upload to FileMaker server, and I highly recommend that for work groups because you can share FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Pro Advanced to other users and, and it'll work fine, but this is much more robust. It does automatic backups and there's all kinds of features that are included in FileMaker Server that are much better for sharing. But what I do recommend this option for, even though you can share it as a work group, this is really good for testing here. Sharing with FileMaker clients and really sharing with yourself. All you do is turn it on. You'll see an IP address appear there. You might want to note that just in case. You'll see all the files here. You want to select the file you want and really all you need is specify users by privilege set. And you can go ahead and specify which ones have access. All we really need is that one. Or you can go ahead and choose all users. And what this actually does when you do all users is it sets up inside of your security. We haven't done a lot with security yet, but it sets up the extended privilege. You have this extended privilege you need to have turned on for that account to access it. So in other words, we have to have these people set up to work under the FMAT extended privilege. Otherwise, even though they can see the file, they won't necessarily get access or get into it. So we can just check all of them and if you again if you went ahead and and did it with uh, we'll allow the no password we're not going to talk about security right now. So we go into sharing again if you went ahead and just choose all users it would check all those options for you. And we'll turn that back on. Click OK. Now it's ready to share. So you really have two things you need to do. You need to turn sharing on and select what users can have access whether you do it here or through extended privileges. Once you do that, now you can go to Open Remote. And what you should see there is that particular machine's name. And then you can see our files right there. Now there's a couple of things you need to know how to do in here. First of all, you need to know how to add in a host, like we've done here with Database Pros. You can hit the plus signs very easy and then enter in the IP address or the domain name of that host. And then you can go ahead and edit it from here if you want to. Those are very easy things to do. I'm not going to cover them. But one thing that people are unsure about is the favorites. It's changed in FileMaker 16. Before, if you went over here and went to Open Favorite, you'd have an option here that allow you to manage your favorites. It's not there anymore. In FileMaker 15, it's there. But in FileMaker 16, it's a little bit different. If you have a star next to it, and want to go ahead and remove that star, you just have to click there and remove it like that. That's the only way I can say to do it. Just uncheck it. And it won't remove it right away. It'll remove it once you go ahead and close FileMaker. So just remember that. But anything that's local will show up here like this one. I didn't add it. It just showed up once I did sharing. And then you can see your file. And it's simple as double clicking on it. It opens it up. And what you want to see is that this one says contacts to John's MacBook Air. It's a little bit different. This is the guest to that file. And if you look under the Windows menu, you can see the different files here as well. Here's the original. Here's the new one that's the guest to it. And so now you have two users. 
user number one in the background, user number two. So you can lock a record and see what happens when you go ahead and try to edit a locked record. See what kind of messages appear. See what kinds of things actually cause record locking and which ones don't. So we're going to go ahead and look at that in the next section, in the next video, and see if we can discover and help you better understand what record locking is all about, exactly how it works.